So recently, Matt over at the Linux cast challenged me to run GNOME for six months. Now, the reason that he challenged me to run GNOME for six months is simply because he's going to be running GNOME for six months. Not only that, but he told me that if I ran GNOME for six months, he would also try Emacs up for six months. Now, one of the reasons content creators might throw out these ideas or these challenges to other people is simply because we're pushing the software that we like to use onto other people, right? That's a, a, I, you guys know I'm a big Emacs user, right? So recently, about a week ago, I did a live stream. I was configuring uh, my Emacs config. Well, Matt comes in the, the, the channel and everything, and he's hackling me about Emacs and all that. And then after the live stream, um, I hopped in his Discord, and we was kind of shooting the shit a little bit. And he told me that he was doing the GNOME challenge. And originally, I was like, okay, who challenged you to do the GNOME challenge? Well, come to find out, he challenged himself. But then he says, hey, you know, he said, if you do the GNOME challenge, I will try out Emacs for six months. And I was talking to a couple of my buddies, and I was like, you know what? I was like, I'm going to do this challenge for the greater good. I'm going to do this challenge so that way someone else who has never messed with Emacs before gets to learn the power of Emacs, right? I want to I want to share the software that I use on a daily basis with other people so much that I'm willing to do I'm willing to do these these little challenges or whatever, right? Not only that, but it does create fun content for you guys, and uh, it gives me something to kind of talk about. So, welcome to GNOME. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I haven't got everything configured. What we're going to do in this video, though, is I'm going to flip over to the desktop. I am going to show you the extensions I got installed. I'm going to talk a little bit about what I have kind of going on as far as my user interface and uh yeah kind of go from there all right so let's go ahead and flip over to the desktop all right so we're on the desktop here and then let's go ahead and let's go ahead and check out the extensions real fast and uh i think it's called extension yeah it's just called extensions all right so if you guys are a gnome users or anything or if you guys are familiar with gnome most of these extensions, you know, are going to probably be familiar to you guys. Um, I'm not a GNOME user, though. So here's my little background in GNOME before we kind of get started. Um, back in the day, and I mean really back in the day, I used to run GNOME 2.x. I think it was like GNOME 2.7, okay? That was the last time I actually ran GNOME. So I am not a GNOME user. Um, I really don't know a whole lot about it anymore. Um, now, I remember the, the 2.x version of GNOME, and that was fantastic in my opinion. Um, I actually, I prefer GNOME 2x over uh, KDE back in the old days. But now, things have kind of turned, and I prefer KDE these days over the new gnome if that makes any sense all right but let's go ahead and look at the extensions so i got this this quick uh tweak settings um i don't know if this actually does anything but i did uh i think i did enable it and then we got blur my shell what blur my shell does it it's supposed to like if i start typing here so you get that gossam blur like in the background that's i Pretty sure that's what Blur My Shell is. Um, not a hundred percent, but I'm I'm like ninety five percent. And then I'm running caffeine. Now, what caffeine does is it disables the screensaver and it disables like auto suspend. It also disables like the lock screen and all that stuff. Pretty much, you want to use caffeine whenever. Um, whenever you're just going to be using your computer 
And yeah, you might have to walk away a couple of times to do something or whatever, but you don't want things to lock up automatically, right? You don't want it to, to you know, to auto lock on you, right? Because you're not, you're not going away for too long. And then I was using this customized uh, workspace uh, plugin or extension. I disabled that. I may enable it again and go through some of the uh, configurations, but so far I have it disabled. And then um, as far as this dash to dock, I tried that dash to dock plugin last night, or that extension rather, and uh, I really didn't like it. Um, I prefer just to have the, the top panel at the top here, and then that's pretty much it. So we do have this dash to panel. Now what dash to panel does is it's actually pretty cool because it turns, so say it turns your panel into an actual, like into a real panel, right? Rather than gnomes, like whatever they call their panel. I don't, I don't even know what they call that top bar. And then of course I'm running forge. <laughs> now what forge is it, Pretty much allows it, it kind of turns GNOME into a tiling window manager. It's okay. It's not great. Um, I'm gonna be real honest, um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, it's just not. It's not. It's not perfect, right? Um, but it does try, and you know, it, it's it's better than nothing. Um, I think so. And that's what that pretty much is. And then we have this tray icons. Now what tray icons do is it just gives you, I think it gives you more, more sys tray icons. I'm pretty sure that's what that does. And then we have just some built in kind of stuff like applications menu. So you can see I have an applications menu. Uh, I don't really use this. I can, I could actually turn that off because I, I don't use that at all. <laughs> And then we have this auto move windows. This allows me to move specific windows to a, a specific work, uh, workspace when they're created. And then I got native window placement and user themes. Okay, so you guys pretty much know what user themes are. They're custom themes. And then I got the workspace indicator. And the workspace indicator... I don't know if this actually works. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's what Workspace Indicator. Work, it, it puts a little thing up here. I'm sorry, guys. I'm still kind of learning uh, GNOME here. But that's pretty much the extensions I'm running. And, of course, the only thing I've really done is I put the top... I put the, the, the bar at the top here because it was at the bottom um, as a default. So I've done that. Now... As far as Forge and all of that, what do I mean by tiling window managers not really great? Well, if I open up a terminal here, you're going to see something. Y'all see that? Half of my window is missing. Or it's it's on both of my screens. I don't know why it does this. And it only happens with Kitty. Uh, so I don't know if it's a setting in Kitty. But what I have to do to fix it is I have to double click Kitty. And you see now it fits fully up on the screen. I don't know why that's happening. Like I, I really, really don't know why this is happening. I had now I haven't tried it with any other um any other terminal. So we could try that. Um so let's try with Alacrity. Alacrity pulls up great. I might have to switch back to Alacrity. Let's see if Alacrity does it again perfect. Okay, so maybe it's just a kitty thing. I'm not, like I said, I'm not 100% sure. I'm sure there's also some other uh, terminal emulators that I could also grab. Now, as far as keybinds, what have I set up? Well, the ones I've really set up was, um, of course, you guys just seen Ropey, okay? I needed some kind of run launcher. I don't, I do not like this damn super key and then me typing something up here. I don't like this, uh, this whole entire thing. I, I think it's clunky. It's slow. 
And quite frankly, the, the run launcher built into GNOME sucks. Like, it's terrible, okay? Um, I don't like it at all. There's also something else. So I have, so I have Rofi. Oh, yes. I have a auto, st or I have uh, Emacs. I have a auto start, of course. That was another weird thing I had to do. So normally, I am so used to window managers where I can tell the window manager, hey, you know, auto start this application for me, right? Well, you guys know I, I love Emacs. And I wanted to figure out a way to start the Emacs Damien. Well, well, I actually didn't know how to do that here on GNOME because on GNOME you can't just you know you can't just type in the application and, and put it as an auto start or something like that. Uh, what I actually had to do is I made a .dot desktop file and I had to put it in my config auto start directory. And that actually auto started uh, Emacs Damien for me. Now I do have a keybind for uh, Emacs here, and another thing that Emacs was doing here on GNOME that was kind of weird is it wasn't full screen like it wasn't making the the Emacs client window. It wasn't making it full screen when it launched. It made it super super small. Um, and then, so I had to do a bit of research on how to fix that. Um, and then I put something in my, uh, configuration just for people that, you know, maybe you're running a desktop environment yourself and you want, uh, the Emacs client to launch in full screen. So the only thing I had to do is do this, add a list, default frame, a list, full screen dot maximized. And that fixed that problem. So... That's pretty good. So we have Emacs. Pretty much, we uh, the key binds we have is Emacs. We have Kitty, um, which I'm gonna probably switch over to Alacrity, and then we have uh, Ropey. Okay, and that's pretty much all I've got. I mean, I I haven't I haven't done too much with it. I'm probably not gonna do too much with it. I got six months with this thing. I, I know I do imagine that I'm gonna customize some of the colors and stuff like that. Hell, I I don't know what else I can do. Maybe figure out some GTK applications that I actually like. I, I don't know. So I just wanted to do a little video for you guys, kind of showing you guys what I've been up to this week, and show you my new desktop environment. GNOME. <laughs> now hopefully I can get GNOME 45 working. Um, I don't know if it's in the repos right now. The the one that I, I downloaded, apparently this is like 44.3 or 44.1 or something like that. So it works. Um, I haven't had any issues or anything like that uh, with installing it. But I do kind of wish that it was GNOME 45 because I think GNOME 45 runs a hell of a lot better than GNOME 44 does. Alright, so that's pretty much all I got. I want you guys to take care, be safe, and peace. Bye guys.